Hello everyone, hi, thank you so much for all the kind comments on my video about doing book reviews. You don't know how much your kind words really, really gave me the confidence to be able to do what I thought I wanted to do. But yeah, here it is. I thought I'll do my first video because I know my procrastinating self will not do it unless I do it. So this is me doing it. So today I'm going to talk about um, a book. I'm, I'm going to finish it this month, but I thought it would be a good idea to just give you um, a brief overview of the books I am reading this month. So I try to read three books a month, um, three or four. I read three or four books a month. And I'm failing only two because I belong to two book clubs. So I belong to um, one book club within a community of women that I belong to. So I help coordinate um, that book club in a community of women I belong to, a mentoring group. And I also co-run or co-coordinate co um, a book club with my colleague at work. Um, so I'm finally, I would read two books because I belong to those two book clubs. So whatever books chosen by those two book clubs, I'll read. And then I'll also read one or two others on things that interest me. So I'll quickly look, show you the um, book club books and just show you what they are, the books I've read in the month of June. So the first book is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. Um, the title of the book is How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Love, Parent and Lead. I did some uh, brief thing on some parts of the book. Um, it talks about perfectionism, empathy, shame, fear, guilt and a lot of the emotions that cripple us, that doesn't allow us to be able to dare to do the things. And, you know, maybe this even reading this book this week is even the reason why I'm, this month is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video. It's because it's allowing me to be able to put myself out there. Um, and be vulnerable because it's vulnerable thinking and putting talking to people even though you don't know if people are going to roll their eyes and say what's our own you know but yeah so this is very good i really recommend it for everyone i think it's a really really good book so that's the book for my first book club my second book club which is the book i'm going to be talking about today is robin sharma's the monk who sold his ferrari um, um i'm going to read you some parts of this book and i'll discuss it as well the third book that i finished that I finished is We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay. This one talks about faith, racial inequality, and um, just generally social injustice and um, a, lot, a lot of the concepts of racism and how racism is embedded into quite a lot of things that we do. Um, and it also look, looks at it from a point of faith. And, you know, because a lot of times people will be like, is this something we should be talking about as a person of faith? So if this is something that you've always wondered about, this is a good book. I have another one. I'm going to do um, another one of my favorites that talks about this topic. And I will do excerpts from that one on another video. But this is one that I would really, really recommend. And then the fourth book that I've been reading, I haven't finished it. I've been reading it for about two and a half months because I, you know, I like fiction. I read a mixture of all things. So this is fiction. It's African fiction. It's an orchestra of minorities by Chigozie Obiyama. So I've been reading this for two months now. I don't know why I've not been able to finish it. It's quite bulky, but I hope to finish it at some point this weekend or next week. Um, but yeah, it's another good one, but I've really struggled a bit with it, but yeah. Um, so those are the four books I'm reading. So like I said, I want to talk about one of the books. I want to talk about something that I found interesting in one of the books that I'm reading, which is Robin Sharma's The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. So I'm going to go into a... Um, I'm going to read something from it and then I'll just discuss what I've read. So it's taken from page 62 of the book um, and I'll just quickly read it and then discuss what I what I took from it and the actionable steps that we can take from it. Um, quick fixes do not work. All lasting inner change requires time and effort. Persistence is the mother of personal change. I'm not saying that it will take years to make profound changes in your life. If you diligently apply the strategies I'm sharing with you every day for only one month, you will be astonished at the results. You will begin to tap into the highest levels of your own capacity and enter the realm of the miraculous. But to reach this destination, you must not get hung up on the outcome. Instead, enjoy the process of personal expansion and growth. Ironically, the less you focus on the end result, the quicker it will come. How so? It's like that classic story of the young boy who travelled far from his home to study under a great teacher. When he met the wise old man, his first question was, How long will it take me to be? How long will it take me before I am as wise as you? The response came swiftly. Five years. This is a very long time, the boy replied. How about if I work twice as hard? Then it will take ten, said the master. Ten? That's far too long. How about if I studied all day and well into the night every night? Fifteen years, said the sage. I don't understand, replied the boy. 
every time I promise to devote more energy to my goal, you tell me that it will take longer. Why? The answer is simple. With one high fixed on the destination, there is only one left to guide you along the journey. Praise the Lord. I have to say praise the Lord, even though it's not a Christian book. <laughs> That's my spirit cocoa coming up. But you get what I mean. Um, that story really, really struck me. It says, when you spend so much time on the destination, your one eye is spent on the destination, so you're not using your two eyes on the journey right in front of you. And doesn't that remind you of how we talk about how we do so many things, you know, so many of the goals that we set for ourselves in life. You know, I want to, I want to progress in my career. I want to become rich. I want to become wealthy. We become so fixated on the end goal, the end result, what we want to become rather than focus on the process of becoming that thing. Everything that comes with personal change, everything that we want to change in our lives, it is good to have a vision. It is good to say, this is the end thing. This is the end goal. This is what I want to become. This is where I'm going. But in actually becoming that thing, if you spend so much time fixated on that thing, there is a high possibility that you're never ever going to get to that thing because you're spending all of your energy on that thing as opposed to how to become that thing. So it is always good to know the what, but the what starts you on the journey because you need to have a vision. Without a vision of where I'm going, obviously you can't get there. But you need to expend your energy on the how and what you're becoming as you get there. So as an example I gave, career, I want to become a CEO. If you get so fixated on the CEO, you don't worry about how you become a CEO or who you become as you become a CEO. You know, it's about the CEO. So in that instance, you begin to worry about what it is, is the perks of what the CEO is, as opposed to what kind of person becomes a CEO, as opposed to the change, the internal change and the growth you go to, the change you go through to become that person who becomes a CEO. And that's a lot of things that we don't um, focus on. So let me be very factual. This book was not my my my, my choice. Um, in the in my workbook club, we the way we structure is we put books on poll, so the books compete against each other. So this was in my book. I chose um, Angela Duckworth's Grit, but the rule is we would always choose the book that has the highest number of votes. So this was the book that got the highest number of votes, and naturally. <laughs> I like self-help, I like personal development, but I roll my eyes a bit at this kind of books because they're very sagey, new agey, you know, don't mind me, it's my spiritual side. But it's not been bad, it's not been bad so far. There are principles that you can take from it that you can apply to areas of life and that's one that really struck me and that's the one I said I'll talk about today. The, the thing about us always fixating, that story was so powerful, I looked at it and I always have this, that's the reason why I always like buying personal books so I can, you know, I highlighted it about the fact that when you spend so much time, I think, think about it. If you're going on a journey and your eye, the two eyes that God gave you, you spent one eye on the destination as opposed to the journey right in front of you, it diverts your attention. It really diverts your attention. So, yeah, I found that very, very profound. Um, and I think that is something that we can apply to everything in life. And I hope that story encourages you to... Think about where you are right now and the process that you're going through um, is eventually going to get you to where you're going to. So don't be so worried about the destination or the output, but also enjoy that process and who you are becoming in that process. Anyway, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoy this. Please let me know in your comments if you found this useful. I found it useful because it means that I'm doing videos and I'm learning a bit more. Um, I'll try to make them a bit shorter, but... And then I'll just um, concentrate on one book, but because I wanted to show all of the books that I have read this month. Anyway, have a lovely, lovely, I doubt if I'll do a video, have a lovely, lovely weekend and also have a lovely July. Um, and God bless you. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. Bye.